This mansion was built in the middle of the frontier and served as a symbol of power for the young United States. It doubled as a fortress due to the constant threat by those that wanted the new American pioneers out. It was the home of the Indiana Territory's first governor, William Henry Harrison, the proven military leader and eventual president of the United States. I'm going to take you on a tour of Grouseland and tell you about some of its rich history. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and recently we visited Grouseland, and we're blown away by learning all that happened here, and I wanted to share its amazing history with all of you. At Family Tree Nuts, we build family trees for clients that either don't know how, don't have the time, or don't want to pay those expensive membership fees. We also make history videos all over the United States and a few countries, so if you like videos like these, be sure to subscribe to our channel, and give us a thumbs up if you like this video. William Henry Harrison assumed his position as the first Indiana Territorial Governor on 10 January 1801 and soon after began his plans to build his home Grouseland. The home was built between 1802 and 1804 on the banks of the important Wabash River on Harrison's 300 acres of land in Vincennes, Indiana. So why the name Grouseland? It is said that the area was loaded with the small game bird and they were his favorite thing to eat. Harrison lived here from 1804 until 1812. The home is a federal style mansion based on homes in Philadelphia and homes that Harrison was familiar with in his native Virginia. It is the first brick home in Indiana and cost Harrison about $20,000 to build, which is about half a million dollars today. The house was like none other in the area and it was in the middle of the frontier and it was said that Harrison built such a fine home to gain the respect that he needed as governor because he was only 27 years old. Now let's go take a tour of the inside. On the first floor, the house has a large foyer and a staircase that is said to be modeled after George Washington's Mount Vernon. Also found on the first floor is the parlor, which served as the council chamber to meet with important figures and conduct business. There's also a large dining room, library, and nursery. Two original portraits of Harrison are found here. The second floor has six bedrooms that were often occupied by guests on official business. The rooms are filled with period furniture, including many pieces that were owned by the Harrisons and many historical items related to the future president. The back bedrooms have cracks in the wall near the ceiling that are said to have occurred during Tecumseh's earthquakes or the New Madrid earthquakes that took place in December 1811 and January and February 1812. Tecumseh had spoken of a sign that would come that would announce that the time to unite and rise up against the whites had come. To thousands of Indians, these earthquakes were that sign. Most of the structures in the area were demolished during this time, but Grouseland stood, making it a symbol of power and strength for all to see. The basement is tall enough to stand up and is the size of the rooms upstairs. Most of the area was used for storage and servants' living areas, but for a time, Harrison's wife, Anna Sims Harrison, ran a school here. Throughout the home, and especially in the basement, visitors can see several oddities relating to the home. A special collection of things belonging to Francis Vigo, the Patriot spy, are also on display. And like I mentioned earlier, the home is also a fortress. Under the front porch is a storage area that is also a magazine. A well for fresh water is in the basement, and it has a reverse well for sewage. The basement has firing slots in the windows, and there's an observation hatch in the roof. During his time at Grouseland, Harrison met many important leaders at his home, several of whom stayed for a time as guests, including Aaron Burr and Lewis and Clark. Harrison also met up with important Indian leaders, and five treaties were signed with them. In 1805, Harrison negotiated the Treaty of Grouseland with Chiefs Little Turtle and Bagongahalis. This treaty ceded a large section of land to the United States. In August of 1810 and July 1811, Harrison met with the most famous Shawnee, Chief Tecumseh, and hundreds of his braves on the front lawn of Grouseland. They could not come to an agreement, and Tecumseh informed Harrison that he would fight 
to keep out any further white settlement in the area. Soon after the second visit, while Tecumseh was away recruiting more tribes to join his confederation, Harrison was able to provoke Tecumseh's brother Tenskatawa, also known as the Prophet, into battle, and defeated him at Tippecanoe. This ended Tecumseh's hopes of a united Indian nation. In 1813, Harrison led troops at the Battle of the Thames, where Tecumseh was killed. Harrison left Grouseland in 1812 and moved his family to North Bend, Ohio, near Cincinnati. Here he served in the Ohio Senate, the U.S. House of Representatives, the U.S. Senate, was the minister to Columbia, and in 1840 was elected as the ninth president of the United States. He is known for his presidential campaign slogan, Tippecanoe and Tyler II, that reflected his success defeating the prophet and made him a national hero. Harrison was only president for 31 days before he died. But that's a story for a different video. The home stayed in the family till 1850, and from there it fell from prominence and was used as a hotel, a library, and even a grain warehouse. In 1909, the Vincennes Water Company bought the land that Grouseland sits on, and plans were made to demolish the home. The Francis Vigo chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution raised funds and restored the home, and it was opened as a museum in 1911. The home was listed as a National Historic Landmark in 1960 and the National Registry of Historic Places in 1966. Other historic buildings have been moved to the property, including the Indiana Territory Capitol Building, also known as the Red House. So, now we know some of the rich history of Grouseland and its impact on American history. What do you think? Did you know that this historical treasure existed? What are your thoughts about the major events that took place and the important treaties that were signed here? Have you ever been to Grouseland or do you now plan to visit? What is your overall opinion about William Henry Harrison? We'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. Also, while you're in Vincennes, be sure you see the other historic locations that it has to offer. The city has many original buildings that are still standing and are museums themselves. Downtown is home to many historical markers and statues that tell the story of Vincennes, going back to 1732. You heard that right, 1732. Just outside the town is the site of Fort Knox II, the muster location before the Battle of Tippecanoe. Be sure to check out the Indiana Military Museum. And lastly, don't miss my favorite spot in the area, the George Rogers Clark Memorial National Park. GRC was called the conqueror of the Old Northwest, but sadly it is said by many that he is the most forgotten hero in American history, and definitely one of my favorite characters. So, here we are at Grouseland, one of the homes of President William Henry Harrison, and a place with a tremendous amount of history. And remember, family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.